Good afternoon, everyone. We're here at UKEC, and welcome to our LPC live stream and LLM. My name is Jessie. I am one of the education advisors from UKEC, and we're from the international team. And today, we have here from University of Law, Mr. Calvin Jones. He is the director of the international recruitment. Hi there. Uh, so, how are you today? I'm good. Actually, it's very sunny today, guys. Yeah, we've got some great weather here in mm -hmm. Manchester. Um, I've just come up very quickly from uh, London, and um, it's just as nice in London as well. So the weather isn't always raining in Manchester, which is what I've heard. Yeah, got... it's not. It's very, very nice today, and we're very blessed to have you come down all the way from London. And today, Kevin is going to be sharing the insights of the course with us and the details, and of course, the entry requirements. And don't forget that because this is a live stream, so if there's any more technical issues, which we really apologize for being late because of that, you can leave us a comment on the right. And if you're watching it from the phone, our comment box is down below. Yeah. I have to remember everything's in reverse this way. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's start with um, some information on the um, LPC or the LLM pathways. Um, as many of you know, if you've started to apply for the BPTC program, the Bar Professional Training Course, those applications uh, for many students have already passed. And the options available still include the Legal Practice Course or the LLM Pathway. Um, so the University of Law, if you've not heard about the University of Law, we are the only university of our name in the UK. We're very specifically oriented on law, business and technology programs. So as a university, we've trained more practicing lawyers than anyone else. Uh, we're one of the UK's longest established specialist providers of legal education. And we have uh, the UK's largest legal alumni group with over 64,000 alumni, um, which means you join, if you study with us, a very large network which gives you uh, global opportunities, essentially. Mm -hmm. So we currently work with 90 out of the top 100 law firms and a network of 900 law firms just across the UK. So we've got some uh, an exceptional alumni group and we're currently working with um, you know, the top law firms within the UK. Um, uh, we have an amazing employability service as well which okay. is one of the largest employability services of any university in the UK. And because they're specifically devoted to a smaller grouping of programs and subject areas, it means you've actually got a very heavily devoted um, and supportive uh, employability service. Oh, that's great. So it doesn't mean that you, you will definitely be helping the students it get means, employed? It, it doesn't mean that we will definitely get everybody uh, employed, mm -hmm. but we do have for the legal practice course an employment guarantee. Um, and that employment guarantee means that if a student does not go into employment within a certain period of time, terms and conditions apply, mm -hmm. i.e. they engage with our employability services, etc., then we give a refund of 50% of their fees and the remaining 50% is given as a credit towards a future program of study. So the terms and conditions for the employment guarantee are actually mentioned on the website. Yeah, I saw that. I know, it's I know. amazing. You guys should go on the website and read that. You can get a refund if you don't get employed, but... It's terms and okay. conditions yeah, apply. Yeah, terms a bit and more conditions detail apply, on that. Yeah. You have to actually engage with the service and because we have a, a, an award-winning employability service. Mm -hmm. So um, if you use the services, then you are you are likely to be much more employable as a result of that. Okay, um, so as a university, we're spread across a large number of locations. So we have campuses in 14 different locations, including um, Manchester, of course, where we're based now, uh, two campuses in London, Birmingham, Bristol, Guildford, Leeds, mm -hmm. Nottingham, uh, we also deliver teaching in the University of East Anglia, University of Exeter, University of Liverpool, and University of Reading. And our campus, we have our own campus as well in Hong Kong. Oh, so okay. we have 14 different campuses, 13 of them are in the UK, and four are university partners where we deliver the teaching. 
So our, our award, um, the qualifications and teaching we're delivering is awarded to those students of those universities, which gives you an indication of the prestige of our university. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how is it like studying at University of Law because it's such a prestige? Is it a different kind of experience? Um, yes, I mean, if you're studying in our uh, Bloomsbury campus, it's uh, very much an undergraduate campus. So um, it's a central London location. So you, you're mixing with students from law and business backgrounds, but all who have, you know, career aspirations in the legal or business field. So, so the students around you are very much focused in the same area of you, as you. So when you're mixing with different students, you're, you're constantly interacting with people who are um, developing themselves in the same field as you, which obviously is quite inspiring as well. Um, with regards to the Moorgate campus, which is the London postgraduate campus, that experience is much more corporate. So it's really setting you up to go into the, to the legal profession. So that's where our postgraduate and professional uh, courses are delivered for, for, men, for a large proportion of the uh, postgraduate students. And that particular space is located uh, very close to many of the large law firms as well. That's <laughs> great. OK, uh, did you have a, another question before I continue? I think I'll let you go on first, and then I'll ask. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, as many of you know uh, that are looking to go into the law field, there are very specific routes like, the, uh, like becoming a solicitor in the UK or a barrister. Those routes to practice depend on the country you're, um, you're from. So if you're an international student, on our website, we have routes to practice for many different countries. So if you go to the country page for your particular country, it will outline the specific routes to practice for your country. And if there, if there isn't inf any information specifically for your country, then you can contact UKEC and we will support them in uh, providing you the exact details of that. And they, I've already told them they can contact me around the clock so they can get hold of accurate information. 24 seven. Absolutely, um, especially different time zones as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the two major routes, as I mentioned, are solicitors and barristers. We offer a, a wide range of different programs at postgraduate level, including um, areas like the LLM uh, company law, LLM corporate governance, international business law, corporate governance, which is uh, a, an area that a lot of students are interested in that are going into practice, then international human rights and investigative areas. Uh, med LLM medical law is especially interesting as well. The legal practice course that we have has, um, it comprises of a variety of different modules which are to support students going into practicing as a solicitor in the UK and many international jurisdictions recognize the legal practice course as well. So you'll cover areas such as um, an introduction to professional practice, uh, business law, dispute resolution, real estate knowledge and skills, and you also, in the second stage, have op an option to choose um, three different modules from a wide range of uh, different subject areas, including wow. employment law, family law, immigration, intellectual prop property, advanced real estate, banking and debt finance. So. These are just some of the areas which you can read more about um, on the University of Law website. But personally, I'd advise you to speak to the UKEC advisors because they're very familiar with our programs and they're much more able to sort of explain the, the, the differences of the different modules. And so I've got a question about the elective modules. Mm. Uh, which one would you say is the most popular one? Well, not the most popular, but people that, the ones that people tend to choose? I think people tend to opt for areas like commercial law and the reason for that is because of its application, its practical application in many different, uh, many different areas. So with commercial law it tends to be the field that many students opt for. Uh, the, there are growing areas um, like the, the technology areas which we're developing as well, mm. which, are, which are growing areas of law. Um, we're developing uh, specialisms around artificial intelligence and the, the laws around those areas That's as well. That's a very interesting 
very, very interesting one. Definitely, I agree. Okay, um, so shall I talk through the fees of the particular programs? Yes. Okay, all right. So, um, are you guys ready? This is the moment of truth. Okay, so uh, we, we have um, specialist fees uh, for different parts of the country. So in London, the fees are a little bit more expensive and more, um, more reasonable, I would say, just like the accommodation costs in other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. So in London, Bloomsbury and Moorgate, our legal practice course fees are around £16,000, just over £16,000. Okay. And there is also a registration fee that you need to pay for the SRA as well. Um, that's the Solicitors Regulation Authority. We also then have um, locations in Chester, Leeds, Liverpool and Manchester where the fees are around uh, just under £12,000 and Bristol, uh, Birmingham, Exeter, Guildford and Reading where the fees are around 12735 So the fees tend to be affected by the location, mm -hmm. London being a sort of premium centre. Yeah, understandable. And it's more expensive in London, so the fees reflect that as well. For the um, LLMs, we've recently redeveloped our LLMs and have um, some amazing specialisms, as I'd um, discussed previously, including areas like med uh, medical law and ethics, which are huge areas um, of, of development, and more internationally focused uh, delivery for the LLM subjects as well. So we have areas like international human rights, mediation and alternative dispute resolution, inter, uh, international business law, and international corporate governance. So the international element of it means that you won't be just studying um, the UK-centred um, law, but you should be able to use it to apply that back in your home country if you, if you go back to your home country and practice there. Okay. You can use that back in your home country. Great. <laughs> okay, so um, accommodation costs. Um, we work with accommodation providers um, in London and across the country. And our accommodation in uh, London and Camden, which is a, a short tube journey away, it's around £205 per week. And there are some images there of, the, of one of the uh, student uh, accommodation rooms there. I'm not sure the Mac, com the Mac comes uh, with it, but uh, <laughs> you can... All the, all the fixtures and fittings, no fixtures and fittings. I think you have to bring your own um, furniture, not furniture, but you have to bring your own, um, your own uh, accessories and things like that. So the accommodation in, in other parts of the country, again, is reflected in, uh, in this particular slide. So in Manchester, where we're based now, it's from around £126 per week and going up to £192 per week in Guildford. And Guildford is uh, one of our larger campuses, and um, it's sort of it's in the Surrey sort of countryside almost. It's in a really beautiful setting, so it's one of the locations that some students like to visit if they want to see a more um, picturesque uh, point of the country. So uh, we have uh, spoken about employability uh, before, but I'll just add a little bit of extra information. So we actually run a, a wide range of different employability workshops and they are really about practically applying the skills that you learn. So things like competencies of a lawyer, so the kinds of things that a lawyer is expected to do, um, how to target specific kinds of legal employers. So because of our interaction with so many law firms, we're aware of the different kinds of procedures that different kinds of law firms follow, um, creating focused CVs and covering letters specifically for different kinds of law firms again and of course application forms networking skills and assessment tests because we we work with so because we work with this broad network we're aware of the different kinds of techniques they use for their screening and we support students in developing an understanding of that and during your studies um, certain students will have access to over three and a half thousand pro bono uh, opportunities is it like placement um, pro bono cases are sort of uh, cases where the students themselves are able, under the supervision of qualified um, pra law, legal practitioners, um, to actually work on particular cases. So there are up to three and a half thousand cases at any given time, which um, is a significant number of cases that we're working on at a time. 
Okay, so some of our alumni have gone on to some quite exciting positions. Uh, we've got uh, an alumnus here, Jose Merza, who um, is currently legal counsel for eBay, and um, he actually found his inter internship through our employment service. So he was uh, he went through our employment service and was able to find um, a role with um, eBay, which is you know, a pretty large company, and. Also, our alumna Caroline Kenny, um, she's an associate general counsel for Facebook as well. Wow. So th there are some significant um, opportunities. Although I appreciate for some students they would be more interested if we'd said like Weibo or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, this is our alumna uh, Marion Monang, and she's um, an associate legal officer for the United Nations. And she's actually from Malaysia, oh. so um, she's one of our alumni from alumna from uh, Malaysia. So we've we've mentioned um, the specific employment guarantee, but I will elaborate a little bit more than that. Oh yes, please. The current employment rate for that program is ninety six percent, so it's a significant percentage of employment, and we have the guarantee of securing your future because we offer a job in nine months or your fees back subject to specific terms and conditions which you can read on our website as well. Mm -hmm. So the employment promise is there. The employment promise is really, it's, it's there as a promise because of the absolute excellence of the service we provide in employability. Um, it's not. It's not there because it's not there as a gimmick. It's because we know from experience of working with a wide range of different law firms that students that engage with our employability service are much more likely to go into employment. I mean, so much so we're willing to put our the English expression is our money where our mouth is, mm -hmm. and we are, are guaranteeing that subject to those specific terms. This is a very full support then. That you're providing the students. Absolutely. I think um, I think a lot of students would be very happy with that. I, I think um, for me personally, working for a university that, that really focuses that much on employment um, means that students are really getting the outcome they expect yeah. from their investment. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, education is an investment. It's it an is. investment of time, energy, and financial, <laughs> a financial investment, of course, which is um, you know significant as well. Mm -hmm. And the return on investment for students and their parents, if their parents are paying for, for their courses or anyone else that's paying uh, for, their, for their studies, is when they go into employment and start recuperating the costs of investment and, and really have great opportunities for the future as well. And that's, that's why working for a university like University of Law is really amazing and, uh, for me. And, and that's why um, it's so beneficial for the students that come and study with us as well. Oh, speaking of the fees, hello Nora. Um, Nora just raised a question. How much is your registration fee? Um, the registration fee for uh, for the application, is it? If a student's overseas, um, if a student's overseas, then the um, registration fee uh, there's there's no actual registration fee. If a student's outside of the UK or inside the UK and they need to be sponsored for Tier Four, mm -hmm. the minimum deposit is three thousand pounds in order ah, to be issued okay. a CAS. Okay. Um, that's that's part of the deposit. That's just that's, the deposit. That's it? that's it. That that's obviously deducted from the total fee. Um, okay. So it's there's no specific registration fee except for the individual um, uh, bodies like the um, SRA um, for the solicitor's registration or for um, other fees. But they're all specifically mentioned in um, the fee chart, which mm -hmm. is back here. Um, so if you can see on the right hand yeah. side for the legal practice course, we have um, there is an additional fee for the from the SRA. They're not our fees. That's the fee of the um, registration body. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just fifteen pounds. Any other questions? Okay. So let's get. We'll take questions at the end of the um, seminar. Okay. Oh. Great.
Okay, and um, the entry criteria uh, for our LPC um, is 2-1 or equivalent. Um, applicants with, um, with experience will potentially be considered as well. Um, so it shouldn't, the, the exact grading shouldn't necessarily put you off applying. We do consider additional experience um, that students have completed. Um, and so we, we would like to see the applicants and really uh, give them a thorough assessment. If you are, if you are, if you if you don't meet the exact entry criteria or equivalent of um, our programs, you, the processing of your application may take a little bit longer. Generally, the applications are processed um, within around three days, approximately. But if you're a non-standard applicant, i.e. You, you don't quite meet our entry criteria and you've got some additional experience which uh, bridges that gap, that's where we would need to have a lecturer assess the application and it, and it would take longer than that, that sort of period of time. Okay, um, so that was the little presentation which I'd put together on the train. <laughs> um, <laughs> can't tell, you can't tell. Yep. Thank you so much, um, Kelvin, for sharing the insights and the entry requirements. So we'll be taking questions shortly, but if any of you are interested in, in applying, we at UKEC are more than happy to help. We will be supporting you, like how they support the student, all throughout your journey, starting with application, finding you the right accommodation, and also processing your visa. All of this comes free, of course, and all you have to do is gather all the right documents that's required for the entry and we'll do the rest for you. So you can just sit back and it's absolutely hassle-free. Most importantly, even though this is the busiest time of the year, we can guarantee to get you an offer, say, three working days, provided that you give us the right documents. And also, from the help from the team of University of Law, and we're available to contact by many um, sorry, you can contact us by Facebook, YouTube, and also alternatively, you can leave your contact details here in the comments box as well, or you can email us at international at ukec.com and we'll put the email there on the comment box. So, I can see the questions coming in now. What is the requirement on IELTS for LPC? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, I think it was answered in the uh, slide as we go back. I think it was 6.5. Yes, exactly. Um, 6.5 and in overall components. Yeah, that's correct. It was 6.5 yeah. for LPC, that's mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. 6.5 for IELTS. And um, just to let you know as well, um, we, we have a range of international bursaries for students as well. So the LLM has a £2,500 bursary for international students from many different countries and UKC will obviously advise you whether you can receive that. I'll provide them a list of all the countries. Yes. And for the LPC course, um, it's £1,000. So there's a bursary um, guaranteed for those for That's students awesome. from a number of different countries, which should include mm -hmm. many of the UKEC students. Um, just to let you know, of course, um, what I should uh, tell you is that UKEC are our leading educational consultant globally. So we work with a network of 400 educational consultants uh, across the world, and UKEC are, are our leading educational consultant. So I just want to acknowledge and appreciate them whilst I'm here as well, especially on their live stream. Thank you. And I don't say this same thing when I go to all of the different educational consultants we work with. It's a very, very specific statement about UKC as our leading educational consultant across the world. So of all of the consultants we work with everywhere, they're our leading consultant. So the, we are very, the support very happy. Great. So the, the support service you'll receive um, during your interaction with them um, is a leading um, support service. So I would definitely advise you to contact them as well. So do we have some more questions? 
Ah, do you offer any scholarship? <laughs> I've just answered. So, um, two and a half thousand pounds approximately for for um, up to two and a half thousand pounds for students um, for the LLM, and around a thousand pounds for students for, from the LPC. Mm -hmm. Yep. I can give you more details about that. Great. Um, any other questions from anyone else? If you have any more inquiries, as I said, feel free to leave it in the comments box and we'll get back to you. Or alternatively, contact us by email at international at ukec.com. Or you can always find our contact detail on Facebook and on our website as well. We're always happy to help. Like, um, like Kelvin mentioned, they will assess you case by case, so don't worry too much about your entry requirement. If you don't match the grade, or if you're just slightly below, but if you have something to compensate for that, they can look at you case by case as well, and we will try our best to push it. Because, yeah, you know, try to get you an offer in this busiest time. Or if you're not sure if you should, which course you should be applying, you can always speak to me or speak to the rest of the team at UKEC. Oh, more questions. May I ask how long is the visa length for LPC course? Um, when the class is... So the, the length, it's the length of the course, um, and if it's over a certain number of months, you get four months extra, don't you? So yeah. I think the LPC um, is around... Um, I think it's a... Is it a mm, year for yes. LPC? Yeah. A year for LPC, but there has been news that they're going to change the visa regulation soon. Hopefully, they'll introduce back the two years after the coursework. Yes. Right now, it's just for four months, but hopefully that new law is going to go through so you guys can stay here to work for another two years. The, um, yeah. Yeah, the, home, the Home Minister, um, Sajid Javid, was actually um, specifically state, saying that um, he, he was uh, thoroughly behind the idea of bringing back post-study work for two years for students. So. Um, I think that's that's great news for everybody um, that that's interested in that kind of route. And mm -hmm. obviously, we we have a a number of uh, different uh, law firms that we work with um, that students, if they if they meet the requirements of that particular law firm and pass their interviews, would be able to potentially go into. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay, so. Please, thank you. Oh. <laughs> No worries, anytime. Okay, so um, are there any other questions at this at this time? We should be signing off soon. But don't worry, we're always here. Here is a contact. We like to say 24-7, but yeah, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, um, so if we're wrapping up, it just leaves me to uh, thank uh, UKEC for the invitation. Um, I, it was supposed to be my colleague who's um, far more interesting and exciting and actually far better dressed lovely. as well than me. <laughs> uh, so uh, she was due to come today but unfortunately um, she was unable to attend so I've made the journey up to Manchester today um, to be with UKEC. Thank you um, so much for that. As one of our uh, as our uh, leading edu educational um, consultant um, for the university and um, also to make sure that uh, the students had as much information as they needed. So you've got your response on there that you yep. can contact international at UKEC. Yeah, so we popped our email on there as well. And thank you very much for, for listening. Thank um, you so much for joining us, for joining me and joining Kevin. Um, we'll see you next time. Hopefully you're going to tune in again. Very nice to meet you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>